Ouch! Gyroscopic stability. Today, we are going to be discussing many properties of physics involving the spinning chain and stick weapon you see before you. Hopper's Hot Rods has become so popular that I have to beat the customers away with a stick. So I'm training. So you must find somewhere else to get your car worked on because you can't get it done here. Not here. Or you'll feel my wood. That is just a joke. So please enjoy this video about applied physics. Ooh, yes. We can now commence the video. Cue the music. <laughs> Welcome back to Hopper's Hot Rods. Today we're worried about the van having not hypothermia, but inthermia, which is more than thermia. Like infamous is more than famous. You don't want it to get too hot because it will cease to function. So what we've done is removed the original radiator. It's a big heavy clunker made of, uh, I guess, brass and copper, mostly. The cooling fans are falling apart. We're going to be outfitting the A-Team van with the exact same setup that we got for the Cadillac, which is a fifth generation Camaro radiator in the fifth generation stock cooling fans. They work better than most of the aftermarket fans. They're designed to fit properly and they're a hundred bucks. The radiator's like a hundred bucks and it weighs a lot less than the uh, original setup. And if it kept a 5.7 engine cool in a Camaro, it'll keep a 5.3 engine cool in a van. Those Camaros had air conditioner. It worked fine with that. So maybe we can even get the air conditioning going. <laughs> okay, that's funny. So along with the radiator and the cooling fans, I went in and picked up a couple of pigtails that plug right into the fans and a pretty cool fan controller all of which was purchased for the Cadillac. But the customer that is paying to have the Cadillac done doesn't know, but I am stealing this from this other project because we're gonna make it work. And uh, I don't want to order a new radiator, stock radiator for the van, and it was leaking. So, and the cooling fans were falling apart. They lasted a while. They came, they were aftermarket fans and they came from a company in Memphis called Cooling Components and their stuff is pretty good. I think OEM stuff is designed a little bit better because it's not designed to be universal. Um, but I'm not downgrading cooling components. Their cooling fans last a long time, but this van sees a lot of regular use. If you're building a hot rod, you'll probably never wear the fans out. But this van has 1.5 million miles on it. It's on its fourth engine or whatever. So we're going with an OEM that's cheap to replace from a very popular generic car. So we can just get parts for this Camaro. And once we build mounts, it'll go in, it'll pop in and out very easily. But there's a little engineering to setting it up. So let's do that now, shall we? Let's have a look. If you go to the trouble of spending some money on antifreeze, um, which you should, and you have to take the radiator back out the way we are, and you don't want to just waste all that. So I keep some of this clear tubing and get it at Lowe's or Home Depot. It's really cheap and get a big roll of it for a couple bucks. And it's a lot cheaper than even one jug of coolant. So you can hopefully recover some of it. See what we get here. There 
we go. Saving money. I keep a couple of these empty jugs around anyway to throw water in if I've got a leaky radiator, which I often do. But uh, we can just work the hose down in there and save some money. I don't know if I've mentioned these line wrenches before, but they work wonderfully. I'm taking loose the transmission lines now to get the radiator out. Well, the shiniest one wasn't the one. Maybe it's the next one. Okay. I got one thing loose. One thing. The temperature probe from the previous um, fan control, which I thought stopped working, Turns out the fans themselves have stopped working. But the uh, probe goes on one of the bolts of the thermostat housing. So when the coolant starts to flow, it can measure the uh, temperature. We may use that system on the uh, Cadillac. No, probably not. But we'll keep it as a fan controller anyway. Improving the function of antiquated vehicles may seem to some like a fool's errand. Perhaps it is, but what people don't get, some people don't get, is when you install your own radiator, cooling fan, everything, when you go down the highway, and the temperature gauge stays sort of where it's supposed to be. Well, you understand everything about it because you put in the radiator. You know what temperature the thermostat opens. You put the overflow tank in, the steam vent for LS engines. You've done all that. So you have this appreciation, this little mental reward or a uh, a very minor sense of achievement when you're driving along and you glance at the temperature gauge I don't know it's different than it is for other drivers on the road I think I haven't mentioned these tools a set of picks comes in so handy when you're trying to get a radiator hose loose from a radiator you slip this thing in there and follow it around and it comes right off See if I can demonstrate it elsewhere on the thing. Mm. I can think of no reason to bother that until it's done. I've got other stuff to do. There's always other stuff to do. The ability to strut around like some sort of altruistic peacock. Nonetheless, profits pff, done, taken care of. Not something I have to worry about. up out of the way now. Now we take the bottom transmission cooling line off and make a separate mess unrelated to the first one. The line wrenches are cool to break loose lines but as they're you know nearly enclosed there's usually only a couple of places you can get them to, to fit onto the line then you grab an open end stubby and you can move kind of quickly once it's broken loose. God, it's a luxury to have a lift, I tell you. Sure, why not? I'm 
I'm going to show why I find these uh, picks so very helpful. And you break your hose clamp loose, get it on out of the way, and you can snug it back up so it doesn't run down the hose when you move it around, if you are so inclined, which I are. Once these things have been here for a while, they bond to the radiator or whatever the fitting is so well that they're sort of stuck and you grab the little grab this pick if you notice it's even got a little offset it's not just bent over it's bent over and angled and that is so that you can slip it in and get in between the rubber and the fitting and if you're careful you won't um, poke a hole in the hose so you can reuse it and then use that to sort of break that seal as you work it around the fitting and it loosens it right up so that you can remove it. I wouldn't say it's always the perfect thing but it comes in very handy for that type of deal so if you don't have a set of these I think they're even called hose picks because they're not they're not crazy sharp so you don't poke holes and stuff too bad but uh, you know these are craftsmen I'm not endorsing that but any pick set you can get them at Northern Tool very handy for stuff well I was about to pull the radiator out and son of a gun I just noticed something. When we were so careful and so cool putting in these extra long dipstick tubes, there's no way I can get the radiator out past them. I'm going to have to take uh, at least the top section of these off. What a pain in the behind. It's all ready to come out too. It just, there's no way. It can't, it won't, you know, I can't, uh, it won't, oh well. All right, then let's get this thing in here. This is the uh, the radiator, and it weighs so little compared to the uh, original. So let's see how it fits in. Well, this is backwards. Let's see how it fits in here. I've actually test fitted already one time with the fans in place, so I know it goes in with plenty of room, and it sits the width and the height is just about perfect really so there's the height as it sitting on the cross member it's not sitting level but once we make the mount we just need to ensure that it is not touching or vibrating against the metal now there are instances when touching and vibrating are take 22 when copernicus came up with this heliocentric model this is just an interesting tangent. The church thought he was going against God by coming up with this theory. And uh, everything that came out of his mouth was against God. And people would say, don't say that. Don't be like Copernicus. And that's where we get the term cuss word. Because Copernicus, the last part of his name is C-U-S. and So... A cuss word was a... This is the end of part one of the radiator. Thank you for watching. See you next time.